The re-emergence of a middle class is helping to stimulate demand, but it's still the ostentatious new homes of the super-rich that are most obvious. Despite Zimbabwe's economic growth spiraling down over the years, building activity has remained standard. Uh, the housing industry at the moment is doing fairly okay. Uh, we have a setup where um, demand certainly overstrips the supply, taking into account that there has not been very significant <coughs> property development, particularly in the last uh, 10 years. In areas surrounding the capital Harare, state-of-the-art structures are rapidly coming up. Thanks to the boom, hundreds of small contractors are taking on international contractors who've dominated the sector in recent years. Lenders are also not missing in the party. They are now coming up with housing schemes that are tailor-made to suit the different economic classes of the Zimbabwean society, adding a further boost to the sector. And it would transform the property market very substantially if mortgage funding were really to be made available, especially long term. One institution is doing five years. The first institution that I mentioned was doing 10 years. And we are expecting that very soon they may get back on the market with the same 10-year uh, mortgage facilities. Zimbabwe has a relatively substantial quality housing stock compared to other African countries. Almost 70% of this housing stock is made up of durable materials ranging from higher-end flats and townhouses to the detached and semi-detached homes found in low-income communities. With the government keen to restore the capital's former Sunshine City tag, there will be questions about whether the boom is sustainable and whether it will be well-managed. Leslie Mirungu, CCTV.